Is that Bruce? What was his name? Middle Age Crazy? <clears throat> it was the best screenplay I had read in a long movie. time. Billy, I'm 38. My birthday is in uh, uh, October. I'll be 39. This movie kind of hits a little close to home. I for feel me. bad for you. It's going to get better, though. It's going to get better. I'm starting to gain a little weight first time in my life down here. I mean, what, I don't know. This is a. Uh, this is staying around for a little bit. Some, yeah. Any of those problems? or? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, we're. Uh, it happens to all of us, you know. It's why time is, to talk about it in the picture. Why is it that we go crazy, men speaking? Why do we go nuts? Pretty well, much I it's think it. it's fear. I think it's uh, you get frightened. It's uh, it's confusing. It's suddenly uh, you go to tie your shoes and you stay there. You know, mm -hmm. I mean that's what it is. I think you you get the sense of it uh, time going by very quickly, which this character does in the picture, um, which happens you know to all of us. It happens to me. You know, I mean I I took my daughter to college this year and I went. The day before he started shooting City Slickers, and I go, wait a second, I just remembered this little kid holding her, you know, just first bath, you know. It's pretty strange, and that's why that's the catalyst for this movie. And I don't think it's a middle-aged crisis. Um, I think it's middle-aged confusion, and I think that's the difference. But it'll get okay. Oh, good. That's, that's a good prognosis. Uh, this is really not a comedy, and it's not a drama. I don't know. It's a... It's very unique, I think. It's well, first, I, I have to disagree with you. I think it's very I much... Did, I laughed a lot. It's very yeah. much a comedy. It's the funniest movie I've ever been in. But yet, at the core, is a really strong drama. Um, just enough of it. There's just enough silly stuff. There's just enough... If there's no heart in the movie, then it's merely a really funny movie. This has such a great center to it, because you really care about the three guys, you care about following my character's journey, and is, you sort of know he's going to come home because that's, you know, it's a movie. But in what shape is he going to, what's going to happen, you know? And how does he find it? I mean, the, if you know the beginning and the end, the, the great thing ab about writing is to, well, how now let's have the fun in getting them there. And this is, a, this is an amazing, you know, 10 days in the lives of these guys. Um, it's a hard movie. It's, it's uh, to do. It's... It's just so much fun to watch. I've, you know, because I've been so involved, I've seen it 40 or 50 times. I, I really want to see it again tonight. I love watching this picture. People want, and people who see it feel that way. They feel so complete. You know, when I leave a movie theater, you really saw a well-made movie that cared about its audiences too. You know, what's the one memory that you'll probably take with you 20 years from now, look back on this experience? What was the one thing you'll remember from this movie? Mm -hmm. Boy, there wasn't one. It was all of it. It was, uh, it was the most fun I've ever had doing anything. It was such an odd thing. I kept going, how odd this is, you know? I'm riding like crazy. You know, I get up so early and go out and, you know, work the cattle with the cowboys every morning just to warm up. You know, I'd get out and do that stuff. I, I'm, the one memory is that from this being my first picture that I've, it was my idea, this movie. I wrote the original concept and then supervised the screenplay and then really satisfied to see my first production up there. And that's what I'll take away f with me about the movies. It's like, did it. You, know, you, you make people laugh all the time when you see them in an audience and you get the immediate feedback. Is it fun as kind of the boss of the film to sit in the back of the audience and really watch the audience laugh out loud? Oh, that yeah. didn't happen all the time in a film. You know, you kind of snicker, but there's some real big laughs. Oh, it's some huge, it. huge. It plays like a concert, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of mine. It plays like zap, zap, zap. And they're all smart jokes. There's not mm -hmm. one that's not a good beauty. Um, it's very satisfying. I've been on stages all my life and all around the world. And something about getting laughs in a movie theater, that's tremendous. Because when I'm on stage, they're coming towards me. You know, the laughs are coming towards me, and I know where they're going to be, you know, because I'm saying I know the time. And that's very thrilling, too. But there's something about watching it up on the screen and hearing people around you do it. And it's just really great because it's, I'm in total control when I'm in one, you know, on the mm -hmm. stage. If all the pieces, you know, you have to structure all the pieces and the timing and the cuts right, you know, to make that joke. Mm -hmm. It's a very different process and much more difficult, I think. Uh, and then when you see it all work, it's really pretty great. 
You've created the new Bambi of the 90s, Norman DeKal. Greatest entrance an actor has ever made in a movie is Norman's entrance. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, when Ron and I were auditioning the cows, it was, you know, real cattle call, as we called them. We had a big trailer, and a wrangler, Jack Lilly, brought in about five different uh, types of calves. But they were all like white-faced, uh, white-faced heifers, you know, and they're, they're okay. They're not, they got pink eyes, and they're kind of weird looking. And in the corner was this cute little fawn-like calf. And Ron and I looked at each other and went, there he is. And that's how we got him. Um, we then had to have several cows across the country impregnated to time the dropping of the calf when we were going to be shooting the river sequence, which was when we first needed a lot of Normans. Uh, so this is a very complicated yeah, picture really with a cowboy calling, with, with Jack calling farms all across the country. Do you have this Jersey, you know, fawn calf? You know, we need them. Da, 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 da. We need them by September 12th. Well, get it done today. You know, and there were these... It's bizarre. These uh, unknowing cows off grazing going, come here. This bull wants to talk to you just for a little while. Um, you're going to give birth to a movie star. We had about, uh, I think, 15 to 16 Normans in just the river sequence alone because the animal rights um, uh, people let us only have Norman in the river for one take or five minutes, whichever ever came first, because the water was so cold. And they get sick very easily. So there's a number of different Normans wow. in that sequence, yeah. Do you find yourself talking <coughs> to cows? When I had a farm, I talked to cows. Yeah, you do. And you talk to your horse. And it's a very centered experience being a, being a cowboy. And I really felt like we were. I loved it. I loved, uh, I spent so much of my time talking, either be on the phone or to audiences, car phone, business meeting, you know, uh, pitching stories, always performing, you know. Mm -hmm. If I can shut up and have a good time, what a great thing. And I found, that being on a horse and just cutting cows or just walking on the horse, it's, boy, it's a great thing to find at this stage of my life. I don't know if you spent much, because you're probably around a lot of people, too, not by yourself. Did you ever find out you go out and herd of a cow and they all just kind of look at you and it's like you ought to make a speech? Yeah, that's true. That's right. Where would you grow up? Uh, Alabama. Alabama. I've made many speeches to cows. and I don't, We don't tell anybody since we're on television, but it's true. You make a speech. Yeah, and you and talk they're great to audiences. Oh, yeah. I've had worse. I understand that you had a little synagogue with, uh, you had a little Yom Kippur ceremony with uh, the cows. Who told you that? Oh, it's a secret. You can't. Uh... Oh, they were mooing. It was very funny. <laughs> they sounded like a very uh, orthodox uh, synagogue one morning, very early. So we went. It was it happened to be the holiday, and we were all upset that we couldn't honor the holiday the right way. And we started. We had a little ceremony with them. They actually sounded like all of my congregation. It was funny. You were definitely a fish out of water. I mean, a New York kid going down, you know, to cattle country. Yeah. But you look great up there as uh, Mitchie the kid. I mean, it was almost believable when he comes off. I say this almost guy looks, believable. Is it, I can almost handle this Billy Crystal. Almost with the believable. Man, I rode so well. Almost believable. I worked so hard on that. That was a tough ride. That was straight down a hill, and I'm on a tight shot. If there was a little wider shot, you would have seen the skill involved in getting my horse to collapse his back legs and slide. Oh, my goodness. It was straight down the hill like that. And when we got there, I said, Ron, I, I, don't, I don't know if I can do that. I'd only been riding for like four months, you know. And my teacher was a great guy, Jerry Gatlin, who was uh, John Wayne's under, uh, stunt coordinator. I said, you can do it, Mr. C. You can do it. He took me up. We went down once. I followed him and then started doing it tentatively. And then I knew for the moment of the picture it needed to be the hero time. And then I brought him up to this little peak and spun him around and then brought him down as, I just trusted him so much. His horse was so great. And the audiences cheer when I come down, mm -hmm. <laughs> I come down when I come down the hill. That made me feel really great when I saw that. No, it's, it's a great movie. It really is. Thank you. I love it a lot. Great. Thank you. No, I do. I love it. So.